Hey everybody, welcome back to the clinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you very much, Guru Nation, for watching. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you go to the blog, all that stuff, okay? So today's video, I'll try to keep it short. Um, it's more of a rant about patient recruitment, okay? And it's things I'm seeing, all right? It, keep in mind, we're in 2016 right now, okay? As, as of the date of this video, it's August 1st. 2016 so more than halfway through 2016 we're still facing the same patient recruitment problems that we faced probably since before I even started in clinical research which was 2005 but certainly since I've started blogging and using YouTube in 2010 okay companies were using the same approach today that they've been using in 2010 and probably even earlier than that and everyone everyone agrees the general consensus of just about every human being in this industry is that the biggest problem in clinical research is patient recruitment, okay? And then there's all kinds of stuff that stem from that. Lack of patient diversity, lack of minority participation, all kinds of stuff, right? How do we solve those problems, okay? How do you get more minorities involved in clinical trials? Sounds like a stupid answer, but it's by enrolling more minorities in clinical trials. Very simple. There's no algorithms needed. There's nothing you need to do with any apps. You can throw millions of dollars at these apps or these databases. You need to connect. You need to resonate with your potential trial participants, right? You being the research sites. And then the CROs too. I mean, it comes from everybody in this industry, okay? We need to put more resources towards finding physicians who already have the patient population, right? You want more minorities, you want more African Americans and Latin Americans in clinical research? Have more African American PIs, have more Latin American PIs. You know why? They see African American patients, right? They see Latin American patients. Those patients can resonate with them, right? This is simple stuff. You don't need apps, you don't need algorithms. You need to, first of all, find these physicians, Teach them about research, educate them, train them, set them up to have a successful and lucrative clinical research practice that can subsidize some of their income that they're, that they're receiving and that they're going to be missing out on from Medicare because the general consensus in the medical industry is Medicare is getting more cumbersome to deal with and their payment, their reimbursements to physicians are decreasing. So... Clinical research, an excellent way to subsidize that income. And oh, by the way, you can tackle the patient recruitment problem. See, the problem now is you've got a handful of physicians doing clinical research in this industry. Probably like 5% of physicians actually do clinical research. There's an alarming stat. I talk about it often. 90% of physicians that participate in their first clinical trial never do a second one. And that's either because they get so frustrated with the process because they don't understand that they can delegate and they can have a staff and they can train a study coordinator and they can have SOPs and, and systems in place to make sure that the clinical trial is running according to good clinical practice. Or the sponsors get fed up with them because they don't know how to run a clinical research trial. Or even worse, they never give them the opportunity because they don't have experience on their resume doing research studies. This is just ludicrous right so what I've been doing with my consulting company and the sites that I help build from the ground up and by this point we've been doing the consulting for over two years we have a real track record now we can actually say we've brought a dozen uh, physicians with zero experience in research we've got them a lucrative business model they may not be able to pay all their bills from just clinical research right now but that's because most don't want to. Most don't want to have their private practice, okay? But they're okay with earning an extra 100000 a year or an extra 200000 a year through research. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so that's the problem with patient recruitment is getting the physicians, the research-naive physicians involved in research. What my CRO does, we reverse engineer a study. We prefer, prefer to work with the more difficult trials because we know how to find those physicians who are already seeing those patients and how to talk them into doing research. Some will say no. Actually, most will say no. They're still not interested. But 
the key is to get those that that five percent, that ten percent, that twenty percent of physicians that are interested and that do have the patient population participating in clinical research studies because then you don't have to go. If you're a sponsor, you don't have to continue going to all the other sites that you've been working with on all your other trials just because they have experience because they don't have the patience, right? That's the catch-22 in this industry. The Usually the physicians that conduct the research don't have large patient private practice and vice versa. The ones who do, the physicians that do have a large private practice, don't have time to do research because there's a lot of cynicism, they hear stories about another doctor, a colleague who tried a clinical trial once, failed miserably, got FDA warning letters, all kinds of stuff, right? So you hear a lot of myths, you hear a lot of rumors, and they end up not doing it. We need more people to go out and educate. This is how you solve the patient recruitment problem, right? One study at a time, one physician at a time, build their sites from the ground up. This is how you get more minorities involved. Everything, reverse engineer, it starts with the doctors, okay? That's who the patients trust, is their private practice physicians, the physicians that they go to see. It's not going to be by some app that just raised millions of dollars in, in funding, okay? Because they have some fancy algorithm. That's not how it works. You find the physicians, right? I also do believe that content marketing works. So another part of the problem, after you tackle the, the physician problem, all right, get more physicians involved in clinical research, get more physicians successful clinical research sites of their own. The other problem is speaking directly to the patients without the physician's involvement. So creating actual content that the study participants can look at when they're finding something about a health condition. Like I have a thing where, and, and I still plan on doing this, we're going to be interviewing physicians. We're going to be talking about different verticals, meaning different therapeutic indications. And we're going to let Google, we're going to let patients who are organically searching for whatever indication this is, Crohn's disease, let's say, they're going to find an interview with a doctor. They're going to talk about Crohn's. And then at the end, they're going to talk about what's going on in clinical research. And first of all, what clinical research is and then how that patient can get involved in clinical research if they're interested. So these are ways to do it. They don't require algorithms. They require some common sense. They require some sweat, right? Like you're, it takes effort to get a site from zero to 12 studies and being profitable, right? It takes effort. You're not going to get patient recruitment increased because of an algorithm or a large database, right? Just a little rant. Hopefully, this can help someone out and reach somebody out there who's a decision maker who may start scratching their head and thinking, hmm, maybe we should uh, give this a try. Let me know. We have a proven model that works. Dan Sfera from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care, Guru Nation. Bye-bye.